All right, I'd like to thank the organizers, uh, Kurt and Sarah, for giving me this opportunity. And I'm excited by this format because it indulges my tendency, I think, to speak way too fast. So today I'm going to tell you about a solution to the stable marriage problem, which I should start by defining. So imagine we have a dating pool of single men and single women. The objective is to marry everybody in such a way that there's no temptation for an unmatched couple to elope. Formally, we'll say that a matching is stable if no unmatched man and woman simultaneously prefer each other to their assigned spouses. Now, the problem is to find a stable arrangement, and it's not a priori obvious that this exists, but I'll give the game away. The answer is yes, and the proof is constructive in a 1962 algorithm of Gale and Shapley. So to describe the algorithm, uh, we'll use a metaphor. So let's imagine for convenience that there's the same number of single men and single women, and that everyone has to well, it's, the way this works is every individual ranks the members of the opposite sex. Then on the first day, the men will then propose to their best choice. Some women receive multiple proposals, other women receive none. A woman with a choice will then reject all but her best suitor, and on the basis of that, we have tentative engagements. Then on subsequent days, any man who has rejected previously apply, proposes to his next best choice, and the women then have a chance to trade up. The claim is that eventually everybody ends up being engaged via this procedure, and furthermore, that the matching found in this way is stable. But before proving this, let's think about an example. So let's imagine a very simple dating pool where there's just three men and three women whose preferences are listed here. They should be read in decreasing order from left to right. On the first day, the men propose to their top choice. So Ada receives two of these proposals. Bev receives one. Ada's the only one with a choice. She prefers Leo, so Max is rejected. He's back on the singles market. Then on the next day, Max proposes to Bev. Bev prefers the new proposal from Max. Um, so she breaks her previous tentative engagement with Ken, and Ken is now single again. <laughs> so then Ken, Ken on the next day proposes to Kat, his next best choice. Kat, you can see, isn't wild about Ken, but she doesn't have any competing offers, so she accepts and the algorithm terminates. Now, in general, the fact that this algorithm terminates is just a simple consequence of finiteness. I won't say anything further. The interesting thing is that it finds stable matchings. But remember, an instability arises only when an unmatched man and woman simultaneously prefer each other. And any woman that a given man prefers to his wife rejected him along the way in favor of somebody she likes better. So this is a stable arrangement. Okay, I'd like to comment now on the heteronormativity of this framework. It's not just <laughs> that this paper was written in 1962, it's actually an essential feature of the algorithm. Um, and indeed, the stable roommates problem doesn't necessarily have a solution. So <laughs> to illustrate, we can imagine four women with the preferences listed here. I'll leave it as an exercise to you to see that whoever is paired with dot is then going to create an instability. Okay, but now that we know that the stable marriage problem can be solved, we might imagine that there are multiple solutions and ask how they compare. So language will say that men and women are possible for each other if there's some stable matching that marries them. The really remarkable thing is the solution found by the Gale Shapley algorithm is not only a stable solution, but it simultaneously optimizes the result for every man. Every man gets his best possible match. Proof by induction, suppose M is the first man rejected by a possible wife, W. The rejection only happens if she receives a proposal from a man, M tilde she prefers. But then stability of the matching that pairs M and W means this M tilde has a preferred and possible wife who would have rejected him on a previous day. That contradicts the induction. So let's continue in this manner. Let's define a partial order to be preferred by every single man. And maybe for symmetry's sake, we should also think about preferred by every woman. Now, it turns out as a consequence of stability that these are diametrically opposed. So better for the men is equivalent to being worse for the women. It's either or. So to prove this, consider two stable matchings, alpha and omega. Let's suppose alpha is better for the men, but then there's some woman who also prefers her alpha match, M, to her omega match, M tilde. But then stability of omega means that M must prefer his omega match, W tilde, and that contradicts the supposition that alpha was the one that's preferred by all the men. In fact, by an observation of John Conway, there is a complete lattice of stable matchings for any fixed dating pool. So there's this uh, the best for all men stable matching found by the Gale Shapley algorithm. There's also a worst for all men stable matching. And given any two matchings, there's a soup and an inf. So Conway's construction of the soup of two stable matchings, alpha and omega, is this. You can imagine that everybody joins right hands with their alpha match and then left hands with their omega match. So this is physically possible. You get disjoint circles with the men facing in, the women facing out. Then if you drop hands and point at your preferred partner, the observation is that within each circle, everyone is pointing in the same way. So the men and women then disagree on which of alpha and omega is better. Okay, the corollary of all of this is that the male proposing algorithm is incredibly sexist. It finds the best <laughs> possible result for all the men while finding the worst possible result 
for all the women. Now, the mathematical literature is also sexist. This male optimality was in the original 1962 paper, but the simultaneous female suboptimality, which has the exact same proof, wasn't observed until 1976. <laughs> all right, so the women would clearly be better off in switching to a women-proposing algorithm, but even if the men act as proposers, they can retaliate. So if each woman truncated her preference list, right below her best possible match, then the suboptimal male proposals will be rejected, and you're forced into the female optimal solution, even if the men are still acting as the proposers. Now, this is not a symmetric situation. The male op proposing algorithm is strategy proof for the men in a very strong sense. So no single man nor any group of men can improve their results by falsifying their preferences. Okay, so I'd like to end by discussing some of the famous real-world applications of this map. Uh, the, the most famous is the National Residency matching program. So in the 1940s, the procedure by which graduating medical students were paired with hospital residency programs was rife with in instability. There was a lot of chaos. And eventually, this hit a crisis point. And in 1952, a group of doctors, after some trial and error, hit on a solution that's exactly the Gale Shapley algorithm. Now, interestingly, Gale and Shapley had no idea about this. And indeed, nobody seemed to notice the connection for some time. A natural question is who proposes in the medical match? Are the results hospital optimal or student optimal? And until the 1990s, the hospital optimal algorithm was used. But now the students act as the proposers. And the corollary then is that your friends in medical schools should not falsify their residency preference forms. They need to tell the truth. All right. There's some real world complications, of course, and to my mind, the most interesting is the fact that medical students are often married, like in real life, to each other. <laughs> the existing implementation allows for this via something called the couples match, where a couple is allowed to submit a pair of preferences, rank pairs of preferences. The only problem is it's actually an NP complete problem and might not have a stable solution. So, thank you. <laughs>